ABC News special coverage of the funeral of Queen Elizabeth live on ABC News. The funeral itself will begin at 5 o'clock San Antonio time, so we will air that service in its entirety. That's right. So first, we're going to go ahead and start with our local weather here. Um, it is Monday. It is, uh, I mean, excuse me, August, September 19th. Thank you so much for joining us. Uh, I hope you had a good weekend. We're going to go ahead and check in with Justin right now. Justin is in for Mike. Justin, how was your weekend? Uh, it was good. Busy, a little hot. Temperatures made it up to 95 yesterday. Yeah, I was so. feeling a little bit more like our July did this weekend. It, was, it wasn't fun to be outside. Mm -hmm. We went outside for a little bit and just... Uh, we're not there yet. We're not into fall yet. It does not feel like it at all. But we do have some hope as we look down the line. There is a little bit of hope on the horizon, and I'll explain that a little bit later. So let's look at the weather headlines here. And uh, we had some clouds roll in this morning. And so now we're looking at mostly cloudy conditions as we look over the airport. There you can see the clouds rolling in. Could we hit 100 this week? Possible. Hard to believe, but it is possible. Uh, as we get towards midweek, temperatures will actually climb a little bit. What about Fiona? We've got a hurricane on our hands. It is, has made landfall this morning in the Dominican Republic. Still doing a lot of damage. Puerto Rico reeling from Fiona. We're going to have the latest there. Plus, cold front? Yeah. And that's also possible. Hints at a cold front by early next week. Let's hope that comes to fruition. We need to see it with these temperatures the way they are. 77 right now, mostly cloudy. Dew point is at 73, feels like 78. Heat index will be a big issue today. Most places in the 70s right now, but by the afternoon, we climb into the 90s for highs, mid 90s, in fact. And uh, with the humidity, it is going to feel a lot warmer. So 75 at 7 a.m., mostly cloudy. We lose some of those clouds as we head towards midday. 87 noontime, and by this afternoon, we're up around 95 with a heat index probably somewhere in the range of 98 to 100. More on this heat, more on all those topics we talked about. That's coming up in just a bit, guys. New this morning, a crash on San Antonio's north side left a driver trapped overnight. Happened just after 1 this morning in the 11,100 block of Wetmore, just south of Wurzbach Parkway. San Antonio police say the driver of the vehicle lost control and crashed into a pole and was then trapped inside. Firefighters responded and used the jaws of life to cut the door of the vehicle off. The driver was taken to a hospital with some minor injuries. CPS Energy was also called out to restore power to the street and traffic lights that was cut due to the crash. And police say one man is dead following a shooting with officers on the city's west side. Police Chief William McManus said the incident started around 9 a.m. on Sunday morning when officers got a call from the suspect's family stating he has 11 outstanding warrants, including four felony warrants and seven misdemeanor warrants. McManus says based on the description given by the family, patrol officers identified a man riding a bike as a possible suspect. According to the preliminary report, when officers attempted to stop the man, he began fighting the officers. McManus said during the struggle, the suspect pushed away from officers stating, quote, I have a gun, I'm going to shoot, end quote. And he reached for his waistband. So police, police have reviewed body camera footage and stated that preliminary reports do align with that footage. McManus says a police officer fired three shots, striking the victim. Now, according to SAPD, the man had identification for multiple people with him at the time, and they're working to positively identify him. The officer is currently being treated for a broken hand. This morning, the city of Lytle is still under a boil water alert. Crews there discovered a water problem that is now worse than originally thought. City officials say the crews were to fix the trying to fix the damage line when they came across two large valves that need to be replaced. They were scheduled to start repair work late last night, but the water system will be shut down. And residents are being told to boil water through tomorrow. More buses carrying migrants arrived in northern cities. The latest was chartered by the city of El Paso. officials there are trying to help the new arrivals find shelter, but other cities are struggling to keep up. ABC's Alex Brache has more from Washington. This morning, immigration taking the political center stage. Florida Governor Ron DeSantis in Wisconsin overnight with this message to fellow Republicans. This border is now an issue in these elections, and I think it's something that our candidates need to take. DeSantis taking credit for the group of roughly 50 Venezuelan migrants flown to Martha's Vineyard. As community service workers rush to find long-term support for the migrants, Massachusetts authorities want a federal human trafficking probe into what it calls inhumane acts by DeSantis and others. 
They were told there was a surprise present for them and that there would be jobs and housing awaiting for them when they arrived. This was obviously a sadistic lie. Over the last four days, buses sponsored by Texas Governor Greg Abbott sending dozens of migrants to the vice president's residence. Sunday, another bus from El Paso in New York City. The city's mayor accusing Abbott of refusing to coordinate. And they did not coordinate at all because I don't think it was politically expedient for them to coordinate. Uh, it was more to do uh, this basic political showmanship that you're seeing now. Abbott has sent some 11,000 migrants from Texas to Chicago, New York, and Washington. New York now exploring using a cruise ship to temporarily house them. And in Texas, the mayor of El Paso says the city handled approximately 2,000 migrants in a single day last week. We don't send anyone where they don't want to go. We make sure we help them and we put human beings and, you know, and we put them on buses with food and make sure they get to their destination with, and make sure that we always continue to treat people like human beings. ABC News pressed the White House about what it's doing about the situation in El Paso, and the press secretary says that DHS is surging resources to the region. Alex Perche, ABC News, Washington. A bird is to blame for a U.S. Navy plane crashing into a North Texas neighborhood. Now, yesterday, the pilots, a military instructor, and student were reportedly on a routine training flight out of Corpus Christi International Airport. You can see the video released by the military, the bird strike causing the pilots to eject from the aircraft. The routine training military jet was supposed to land at Naval Air Station Joint Reserve Base Fort Worth. The jet instead crashed into the backyard of a home in Lake Worth. The fire department says three homes in total were damaged and three people had minor injuries after that, cra that crash sparked a small fire. Both pilots are in the hospital, one in serious condition with non-life-threatening injuries. <laughs> In the Atlantic, Hurricane Fiona has made landfall in the Dominican Republic. It already unleashed landslides in Puerto Rico yesterday, knocking out power to the entire island and ripping up asphalt off of roads as it came ashore. According to the U.S. National Hurricane Center, Fiona hit with the maximum sustained winds of 85 miles per hour. Forecasters had said the storm would cause catastrophic flooding and threatened to dump historic levels of rain with up to 25 inches possible in some areas. Fiona struck on the anniversary of Hurricane Hugo, which his reporter Biden has declared a state of emergency. In Japan, a powerful typhoon has come ashore, bringing strong winds and heavy rain. Authorities there urged as many as 10 million residents to evacuate due to the storm. Many were told to seek shelter in sturdy buildings or move to higher places. More than 300,000 households in Japan's southwestern island are out of power. At least 17 people have been hurt. On a lighter note, congratulations due to former Spurs assistant coach Becky Hammond, who led the Las Vegas Aces to their first WNBA title this weekend. The Aces defeated the Connecticut Sun yesterday 78-71 in Game 4 of the WNBA Finals. Team won the series three games to one. Coach Hammond becomes the first head coach to win a WNBA title in their first season at the helm. She's also the first former player to win the finals as a head coach. After the game, Coach Hammond was asked what she was feeling now that she's a champion. You know, when I took the job in December, I thought when I started kind of breaking down their rosters that um, I could do something with it. I, I had a vision of what I wanted to do with this team. It's a little surreal. Maybe you can call me back in like a week when it sinks in. You can tell she's a little hoarse. Yeah, she too. is from screaming. <laughs> yeah, this is the first major sports championship for the city of Las Vegas, Nevada. Congratulations, Becky. Yeah, congratulations. Super exciting. Fun weekend there in Vegas. Time now, 438 and 77 degrees for now. One of San Antonio's largest school districts is doing what it can to get students back up to speed. What Northside ISD is doing to get back some of the time and the education lost during the worldwide pandemic. And a quick look at the roads with Trans Sky looking over at Loop 410 at Babcock Road. Things are moving there pretty quiet so far this morning. And more of the same as we go into this week. It was hot around here this week, and especially in the late afternoon in that direct sun. Uh, very, very warm. We'll get Justin's forecast coming up as we go to break a live look at the moments leading up to the coverage of the funeral of Queen Elizabeth II. Full coverage begins at 5 o'clock right here on KSAT 12. Stay with us.
weekend. We rejoin ABC coming up in about 15 minutes or so. Northside ISD almost a month into the school year and for some students, families and teachers, this is really the first year back in person. The North Northside ISD Deputy Superintendent for Curriculum and Instruction joined us on Leading SA this weekend to talk about how everyone is getting back in the swing of things. Dr. Jordan joined us and we talked about a lot. We talked about how students around the country, around Texas and around Northside ISD, their math and their reading scores went down throughout the process of this pandemic. But there are initiatives in place at Northside ISD to address the math and reading scores. Take a listen. We anticipated it would take us, you know, multiple years for students to get back to pre-pandemic levels in their reading performance and mathematics performance. Math in particularly has been hit the hardest. Uh, the great news is our students through the tremendous work of our teachers um, and parents coming together, we've seen terrific gains. Uh, we still have a ways to go though. We also talked about the rise of STEM programs across the district, and we talked about the redistricting of NISD and how you can get involved. Now, you can watch the whole interview right now. Check out the whole discussion. Just head to ksat.com. We have leading essay every Sunday morning at 8 a.m. So guys, we'll see you next Sunday. Back to you. Thanks, Max. Time now, 443 and 77 degrees for now. As we go to break, a live look at the moments leading up to the funeral of Queen Elizabeth. Full coverage begins at 5 o'clock right here on KSAT 12. You can also check in anytime at KSAT.com, where our live stream will continue throughout the day. It is a historic day in London. Again, a live look. We are moments away from the Queen's state funeral, closing out the nation's 12 day farewell to their longest reigning monarch. And 500 world leaders are expected to attend what will likely be the most watched live television event in history. Up to 4 billion people are expected to watch. We will air the Queen's funeral service in its entirety coming up at 5 a.m. ABC's Ines de la Quatera has a preview. This morning, a final farewell and a day of pomp and pageantry as Queen Elizabeth II is laid to rest. Her state funeral marking the end of a 12-day mourning period in the UK, marked by tributes along the way from all corners of the nation. Overnight world leaders descending on London to honor her lifetime of service. President Biden paying his respects at Westminster Hall while the Queen lay in state. First Lady Dr. Jill Biden at his side. As I've told the King, she's going to be with him every step of the way, every minute, every moment. And that's a reassuring notion. So to all the people of England, all the people in the United Kingdom, our hearts go out to you. Also among those paying tribute, Ukraine's First Lady Olena Zelenska. In a touching scene, Queen Elizabeth's eight grandchildren holding vigil as the crowds passed. And I wasn't expecting to feel much emotion at all, but as I looked up, I, I felt myself welling up a bit, so yeah, it was, it was quite moving. As the queue winds down, roughly a million people expected to fill the streets of London to catch a glimpse of the Queen's funeral procession, some camping out for days, including American Trina Yonker. I'm a huge history buff. The traditions have been in place in this country for hundreds and hundreds of years before, before our U.S. was created. London bracing for the most challenging policing event in its history with extra military personnel, extra CCTV, sniffer dogs and police. The threats ranging from pickpocket. Of the Queen's funeral, the palace releasing this unseen photo of the Queen taken in May ahead of the Platinum Jubilee, showing those sparkling eyes and vibrant smile. And later, the Queen will be transferred in a procession from Westminster Abbey to St. George's Chapel at Windsor Castle. That will be her final resting place, where she will be buried along her late husband, Philip. In Esdell Equitera, ABC News, London. And here locally looking out with the Trans Guide camera, things have been looking pretty good so far. Kind of quiet there at Loop 410 and Babcock Road. And again, we're monitoring ABC, joining them in about 10 minutes. We know the procession has begun from Westminster Hall over to Westminster Abbey for the state funeral. But Justin is here now back here at home focusing on what's happening right now. And the big story this week will be the heat. I'm sorry to say I know he's suffered through 
Uh, pretty wild summer when it comes to the heat. This week is going to be awful hot when it comes to September at least. 77 right now. Dew point is at 73. East southeasterly winds at about 5 miles per hour. We are looking at a little bit of a heat index this morning. You'll find most temperatures in the 70s at this hour. 71 Kerrville, 75 New Braunfels, mid to upper 70s here across Bear County at this hour. So we start off pretty status quo here. As far as the heat index today, well, there is quite a bit of humidity. Temperatures make it up to 95. And look at the projected heat index around 4 p.m., close to 100. So that feels like number is going to be pretty awful later this afternoon. Just a heads up if you plan to be outside 99. Uh, that feels like number at 6 p.m. So the ACs will be cranked up uh, later today. Forecast high temperatures 95 here in San Antonio, 95 in New Braunfels, 94 Seguin, 93 Somerset, 92 in Pearsall, 91 Bernie this afternoon. Why all this heat? That he hides back. It came and set right over top of us. It'll be here for the next several days. This ridge uh, sitting over Texas until it finally gets dislodged by the weekend. So that keeps things pretty toasty out and uh, around the ridge of high pressure. We've got some storms. We actually had some severe weather earlier across parts of Illinois around uh, well between sh uh, Chicago and St. Louis, but those storms starting to weaken a little bit. There's a little closer look. Pretty heavy rain up there across the Midwest, but that's on the periphery of that ridge of high pressure. Meantime, I got to take you down to Puerto Rico and Dominican Republic because Hurricane Fiona is wreaking havoc down there. If you heard over the weekend, the entire island of Puerto Rico lost power after Fiona moved over top of them, and now it has made landfall just on the edge here of the Dominican Republic, bringing some pretty heavy rain. Now, the heaviest of the rain is on the east side of the storm, so still dropping some copious amounts of rain over Puerto Rico and flooding is still underway there. Here's the latest when it comes to Fiona. Winds are at 90 miles per hour, gusting to 115. That makes it a cat one storm. It's moving northwest at about eight miles per hour. Latest track? takes it near the Bahamas by uh, Tuesday, and then it'll move north towards Bermuda, and that'll probably be uh, Thursday into Friday, and then eventually this moves out over cooler waters and will weaken, but still a Category 2 storm even by Saturday, so this is uh, going to become a major hurricane, we think, over time. Meantime, our forecast, that I mentioned that high pressure wobbles around a little bit, but it is with us through at least Saturday. Then it finally moves away, and by Sunday, there are indications that we could get a frontal boundary down through San Antonio, maybe by Monday, early Monday. We're still going to work on that timing. It's still a little early to get too excited about this yet, but I do think, if anything else, we're going to see some cooler temperatures by late Sunday into Monday, so something to be excited about. In the meantime, we could go as high as 98 by Thursday and Friday. Lower humidity, so the heat index won't be as bad, but could we hit 100? I don't think it's out of the question. During fall officially begins on Thursday, th Thursday evening, and uh, you see the numbers there. Not so nice, uh, but hopefully by Sunday into Monday of next week, we'll get you some relief. Have you guys been to HEB lately to see all the fall stuff that I, there is? It, it looks so nice, right? Yeah, <laughs> the I mean, fall it's inside the store. There's a ton of stuff. I mean, it's it's bigger than I remember Halloween at times now, <laughs> yes. as far as all the stuff, you know, candles. Tested by the, 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 the cold AC? air. That's the best part. <laughs> That's right. That's when fall arrives. Exactly. Yes. When you arrive in the air conditioning, 453, yes. 77 degrees. And as we go to break, a live look at the moments leading up to the funeral of Queen Elizabeth. Full coverage begins at 5 a.m. right here on KSET 12. Stay with us. Broadway's longest running show is finally coming to an end. For the latest what's happening in Hollywood, here's ABC's Christopher Watson. Some things worth fighting for. It's a number one debut for the Viola Davis action drama The Woman King. We are the home The film about an all-female African fighting force earned a better than expected 19 million dollars, powered by glowing reviews and a 60% female debut weekend audience. I'll kill you. <gasps> the murder mystery comedy See How They Run bowed in third, 3.1 million there, right after the horror flick Barbarian. Oh! Last week's number one slid to second with 6.3 million bucks. Woody Allen tells the Spanish press his next film, Wasp 22, will be his last. The 86-year-old Oscar-winning filmmaker cites in part disenchantment with a modern theatrical experience for his decision, saying he'll spend more time writing. 
Broadway's longest-running show, Phantom of the Opera, will close in February after 35 years and more than 13,500 performances. And country star Trisha Yearwood's 58 Monday. And that's what's happening in Hollywood. I'm Christopher Watson, ABC News. Registration is open for the ninth annual Head for the Cure. The 5K run and walk raises awareness and funds to fight brain cancer. KSET's former news director Jim Boyle was diagnosed with glioblastoma and passed away, but his legacy lives on. His daughter helped kick off this event outside of our KSET studios back in 2014, and since then it has grown with more families running for the survivors and in remembrance of their loved ones. This year it all kicks off Saturday the 24th. You can register right now on KSET.com. Right now, it is 458, 77 degrees. And let's look at the roads with Trans Guide really quick. Looking at Loop 410 and Babcock Road, things are looking pretty good right now. That's right. All right, so ABC is about to begin. And there is the what she was talking about there. We are now about to join ABC's special coverage of the state funeral for Queen Elizabeth II, which is officially becoming up here in just over a minute. I do want to let you know one thing. We are going to stay here in the studio throughout the entire coverage. Uh, to keep track of local news, weather, and of course traffic. So we are here standing by, but obviously the big story of the day is what you're now seeing live on the right side of your screen, the coffin of Queen Elizabeth now on the shoulders of the Grenadier Guards and about to make their way into Westminster Abbey. That's right. Stay with us and join as we join ABC News for special coverage now live in progress. Steven. Pretty amazing. All right, let's get a look here at the home because roads are getting busier now, so just make sure that you drive carefully out there. Thankfully, no issues have popped up that would cause too much concern, but of course, the headline right now on the roadways are going to be the slowdowns that you're seeing right there on the map. Usual trouble spots, so as I mentioned, drive safely if you're heading in from 90 to 81 or driving up towards 1604 on the northwest side. We are seeing those slowdowns already picking up, but we're going to leave you with a shot at Transguide. There is 281 at San Pedro. Watch for that curve there and 90 at Nogalito. So traffic is already moving pretty quickly through that area. So as I mentioned, no issues to report just yet, but active construction is now listed on our website. So head over there, kset.com slash traffic for more information, Justin. And temperatures today will be awful warm. 95, the forecast die. The heat index will be up close to 100. Southeasterly winds pumping in some of that moisture. It'll be mostly sunny, though, by the afternoon. And the extended forecast is uh, also hot. 97 Wednesday, 98 Thursday. We're getting close to some records, even going into the weekend still hot. But maybe a cold front late Sunday, Monday, that uh, finally will bring some cooler air. And obviously, we're going to be cutting in and out of uh, some of the coverage with ABC today, but you can catch the latest weather on KSAT.com, also on our KSAT weather app. We're not going anywhere. We're going to keep tabs on the news and traffic for you for sure. That's right. We'll see you back here at 9. Thank you for joining us this morning.